So before we start, I want to, I guess, issue a little bit of warnings that we have. Um, there's going to be some trigger warnings in the books that we cover. There's going to be violence, dubious consent, talks of slavery, toxic behavior, sexual misconduct, harsh language and emotions from the characters and from us. And just wanted to let everybody know that before we start, it's probably not going to be for anybody under 18, but we're going to try and keep it as civil as we can. Also, a huge spoiler alert, we're not going to hold back on anything. There's going to be plot talked about, characters, character development, motives, outcomes, everything. So I just want everybody to know that before you start, and that's going to be the same for, that's going to be the same for Wild Seed and for Mind of My Mind. Book two. All right. First question. Where is Onyanwu? Somewhere in, I want to say, Los Angeles? Onyanwu is in his book? Yeah. She changed her name to Emma. I had a feeling, you know, but I was like, man, because I had Emma in the last book, too. Yeah, she changed her name at the very end of the last book. She okay. said, I'm going to call myself Emma in this new country because mm -hmm. it means grandma or ancestor or something like that. It's now thinking back, it's so weird that such a strong character from the first book took such a, a big backseat in this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was still there, still had a moments, but like it was like a, back, like a backseat to the new character. Yeah. Well, if you read the books out of order, it kind of makes sense because this book was mostly focused on the main girl. Who I forgot her name. Mary. Mary, yeah. It was mostly focused on Mary. Yeah. Now, Mary. So, one stark comparison between the books was the narration. There's a new narrator this time who I just love listening to. So, like, I took, like, a week, a week and a half to listen. Because we used these other books to the first book. This book was done in two days. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This book is, I think, shorter, too. I don't to even care about that. Because the other book, I would listen to like a paragraph and be like, all right, let me go do something else. But this book, I was just, I was just there. Because I feel like yeah, yeah. the narrator had more of a uh, like a black voice. But I want to say like that. But you know what I mean? Like, I could just feel the characters better. And Mary was, I guess, what everybody wanted Anyangu to be. A strong black character. Maybe a little bit stereotypical, but that's the point. And that's what drew me in because she wasn't taking yeah. anything from anybody, anybody yeah, catching these hands, anybody catching yeah. these hands, except Doro. You, you can't hit Doro. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, she did do something to him. Yeah, he I know. was like, do it again and you will see what's going to happen to you. <laughs> but she was a wild one. She was more the wild seed. Yo, I loved, I, I did love her character a lot. I ain't going to yeah. lie. Yeah. So this book is called Mind of My Mind and it takes place in Los Angeles. Which is another yes. another theme that brought it all together as well. Yeah. So, so go ahead. This one looked at, I guess, living in the ghetto versus being like living um, in high society. If you notice, a lot of his white children lived in high society. A lot of his yep. black children lived in poor societies. Yep. And obviously. He provided money to them, but they still chose. Well, I wouldn't say they chose because of redlining and stuff like that. They probably didn't have a choice, really. Well, sometimes they just went back to it. And sometimes they went back to it because that's their family. And even though they didn't know that that's their family, yeah, they had that natural pull. Yep. You think that's like true in general for humans? Like, we feel a natural pull. I mean, I know we feel a natural pull to people who look like us. Yeah. But, like, do you think that we are pulled to a family, like, actual, blood. like, maybe blood relative? I would say it depends on history as well. But I would still say yes, because, you know, people would do you wrong in the past, but because they're family, you have a higher chance of actually, like, opening up to them again in the future because they're family. And somebody who's not family would just get, like, you're dead to me. Mm -hmm. But sometimes family does stuff that makes you say you're dead to me anyways. So it's like, it depends on the situation sometimes. But yes, that pull for family is always going to be there because that's, that's your family. That's home. Yeah, I feel that. 
All right, so let's talk about the openings of this book. We have to do this book justice. We spent so much time on the last book. We have to spend. So just that's why much. I wanted to make it. You know, I didn't want to go through every single thing in the first book. But this book, um, you 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 have a better memory of the book than I do. So you do the opening. Yeah, let's start with the opening. So the opening is the mom. Ooh, she yeah, Doro yeah. gave her money, put her in an upscale place, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she fled from the upscale place, went back to the ghetto, mm -hmm. became a prostitute and an alcoholic. Why? Why? Because she was crazy. Because of her powers. So she was a latent, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she was a latent. She kept picking up static, I guess. And I think only alcohol and men could, like, allow her to be distracted from it. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, very sad. But that, that goes to show what people do now to escape from their fear, their, um, oh, their shoot. vices. Yeah. You just made me think of something. Mm -hmm. Mental health. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And people, like, you know, if you look at this scenario from the outside looking in, you will see this woman and you'd be like, why would she choose to be a prostitute? And, you know, and you would judge, people would judge her and like look down on her and all this kind of stuff yeah. without actually fully understanding that she is trying to cope with something that's going on internally and yep. she actually needs help, not judgment. Lots of help. And I think that's a, a major problem with society nowadays is that people are so quick to judge Yeah. and like, like be, almost be angry with somebody basically instead of like let me try and figure out why they're doing this so i could help them yeah like why or, aren't why aren't you able to be wise? strong why yeah, can't you be like, strong oh, like me not... exactly <laughs> oh so you weak you weak-minded you it's yeah like, why yeah, yeah. you don't know that you don't know it, it taking all this strength just to like not want to self-delete yep and you over here with a normal brain you know, living life and you judging people. It's, it's really sad. Yeah, man. It is. But that's what her mental issues kind of reminded me of that because nobody would choose to live in the ghetto over having a rich, like a place like Dora gave her, basically. Yeah. That's crazy. So she became a prostitute. Her daughter is three years old. Dora comes to visit. That's how the book opens up. And he was like, I've been away too long. Oh, that's the next thing. Doro have like seed colonies all over the country, all over Ooh. North America. And the world too, right? All over the world. But I think he tried pulling all his people into one yeah, continent. Yeah. So he had everybody in North America, basically, at that point. Can I mention different races like near the end? Like yeah, different races of people that he brought. And he kept them separated. Yeah, he kept them separated. But it's kind of interesting because he did it for a valid reason, but you could also look at it from a racial point of view as well. Yeah. It's like kind of like racism, like separatism in a way. Mm -hmm. But we know that he didn't do it for that reason. He did it because it's hard for people to get along with somebody who's not in their family as a yeah. sidekick. Yeah. I feel like this book had a better breakdown of almost everything that was going on throughout this series. And I, it makes me excited for the next book. I'm not going to lie. I ain't gonna lie, just to brush your bubble a little bit, next book will be boring. I ain't gonna tell you right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's stay here then in this in this realm of funness. I think it's because At least for me. No, because the way this book went down, the next book would have to come higher than that. If it can't, it will be boring. Like I'm not I'm not gonna lie. No, when I read the so when I read the books in order, yeah, back in the day, the third book is the most boring one to me out of all of them. The fourth one gets back to being good again, but mm. the third book was, I was like, bruh. Mm. Okay. It That's... was, it gets good near the end, but it's mm. like the beginning and middle is like, just taking so long to set up what's <laughs> going on. That's why I felt for the first book a little bit. Okay, I feel that. I never really got hyped for the first book at all. Like... Mm. You might get hyped for the second book, the third book, maybe. Okay, okay. You, um, you want to fast forward to teenage years? Like just after transition or just before transition? Yeah, just before transition. Yes. So they're living with Emma now, who is Anyanwu. 
under another assumed name. Dora put them to live with her because the mom need help. And Anyan Wu's a healer slash she's really good at helping people through transition. Yeah. I think at first Dora wanted her to help the girl go through mm -hmm. transition. But yeah. later on, I guess he changed his mind. Um, let's talk about that scene where she did, she bossed this man in the head. <laughs> so one of the Johns comes to look for her. What's her face? What is her face? Reina? Reina. Yep, Reina. And he sees her and he's like, well, you're going to have to do what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, he was like, where's Reina? Is mm -hmm. it Reina or Reina? I don't think it matters. She's like, come back at five, bro. She ain't here. He's like, I don't care. She here. Where she at? She's like, she's not here. He's like, he's like, well, you'll have to do then. That's she's ridiculous. like, nah, I ain't a prostitute. That's not me. He's like, I don't care. Busting the house. Oh my gosh. I feel like that's also kind of like this story. Also, to me, gives like a little bit like description of society mm -hmm. uh like male entitlement mm. like, i feel like a lot of guys feel entitled to women's bodies yep it's like miss can i get your number no well freak you then your ugly self like yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, that yeah. weird visceral response from yeah. being rejected mm -hmm. um so he attacks her she attacks back and she like i said she don't hold back yeah. Oh, before she even answered the door, she was already prepared. Yeah, because I guess she could feel something bad was gonna happen. Yeah, she pick up that that yeah. frying pan, boy. She had to be behind her back. <laughs> did back she him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did he die or was he just hurt? <laughs> no, I I think um they got him to a hospital. Okay. Yeah. Let's drop him off. They didn't really <laughs> say if he lived or died after that, but I, I'm yeah. gonna assume he lived. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, Emma and Ren Rena were pissed, but like. They were pissed, but they didn't even ask what happened. Exactly. Which is another... And that's another thing in society. Yeah, exactly. People don't even try and figure out why something happened. They just immediately get angry because you did something wrong. And she had a kind of like a, you know, like a dark-ish past where she was like a, a rebel. So like, it, it's easy to assume that she just did it all. The... But then I guess Anyanu recognized what happened after she actually listened to her. Yeah. Yeah. So the girl nearly got raped. She finally told them after they berate her for like several paragraphs, <laughs> they were just cussing her out, asking her how she could be so stupid, reckless, blah, blah, blah. And Yanwu did not mention anything about abominations this whole entire book. <laughs> so... <laughs> I guess the other podcast felt happy about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and um, when she realized what was happening, Anyanu was like, okay, I understand, kind of. Yeah. Then Doro comes. Then Doro comes. And Here he did comes not, Doro. He didn't care. Yeah. He was like, "You should just let him do it." Because... That's ridiculous. But he he explained yeah. why. He explained why in such a. It's weird, but it's like it's, it's like a loving way again. That that's that. Yeah. He drove her to um near a prison, right? Yeah, outside of a prison. And that static was going crazy. Yeah, she. She was dealing with all of their negative emotions and thoughts and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And Dora told her this thing that really like, it didn't really send chills, but it was very deep. He was like, you can't handle all of that. These people live with these thoughts all the time and they're just fine. Mm -hmm. That was intense. It's like, yeah, you can't live in there. Again, going back to talking about mental health again, it's like people struggle with these things in their head. Mm -hmm. every day and outside they look normal yep and you don't know what's going on inside of them yeah and sometimes they don't even know it's like a later sometimes thing. they don't even know yeah because yeah. people compartmentalize so much it's like i worry about money but i don't have time to think about that because i need to put food on the table yeah exactly and then it's it's just they're just nagging and you don't know what it is and then i get chills now thinking about it because like what we do in everyday life. Like, yeah. you know, you have all these things to worry about, but you don't have the time to even break them down or tell anybody most of the time. And it's just, you're going about 
and you feel normal, but you're not. Your yeah. mind is not normal. I did not look at chat this whole time. Oh, it's all good. But I appreciate him for coming through, though. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for keeping track. Always. Um, yeah. So she basically started to go crazy because of all the thoughts coming in, and that kind of reminded me of when they go through transition as well. She was like pre-transition still, right? She was. And she was already picking up the static. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how Dora knew she was going to be strong. That's how he could tell if they're going to be strong. Because before transition, if they're already having kind of like powers. Yeah. He's like, yeah, when they go through transition, they're going to be, if they survive, they're going to be good. Um, To clarify, I don't think latents go through transition. They just have that latent ability. They don't even get to start transition. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you might be right. Cause you, the way you said it was like they got stuck, but it, like they didn't even go through it yet. But this book, mm -hmm. with its greatness, will break that down for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. goodness! This is, I want to stop now. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, after that, he takes her to the jail. She gets static. Then he tells her, no, he makes her feel beautiful. You know, buys her clothes, get her all kind of stuff. Cause he bought to give us some wood. He bought to bring the hammer down. Yeah, you, you gonna marry somebody when? Eh, two weeks, you know. You have time. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoy all this stuff now. Oh, it's not even that. It's like, how do you tell yourself I'm gonna marry somebody that I don't love because she loves him? Yeah. In two weeks, like you have time to deal with these emotions. Go ahead, you could. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have thousands of years to deal with my stuff, but you have a couple of weeks, you good. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, so, that's wild, man. She is pre transition, so the reason that he's marrying her to this guy is to help her get through transition, correct? To help her yeah. understand what she's going to be. Yeah. Boy, she gonna be something. Yeah, so he pairs her up with his son. One of his sons. Earl. What's his name? Carl Larkin. Earl? Carl. Carl. Okay. That's an ugly name, by the way. I hated reading his name or hearing his name in my earphones. But the thing about Carl. Carl is, Carl is basically almost already married, but there's reasons for that. Yeah. You could Carl could control minds. Yes. He's a mind controller, which means he's probably evil. And it's like, the mind is controlled so strongly that the person thinks that those thoughts are their thoughts. Because they plant, what I don't forget what they call it, but they plant a, a thing in their mind. They call it conditioning. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. Because if you think about conditioning or like grooming and stuff like that in normal, in like normal context, mm -hmm. it's like taking somebody, like maybe a child, for instance, and basically making them into something that you want them to be. And we talk about predators doing this often. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy because in this book, the people who could control minds kind of do the same thing. Yeah. They basically turn people into slaves. Mm -hmm. So he already has... That they want to do it. Yeah, he already has a girlfriend who's... I, he's She's in love with him, but I guess it's not because she actually does love him. But yeah. he didn't condition her until not later. fully. No, he never conditioned her. I think he said like he wanted to like he would gain bored with them too quick when he would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, yeah, she wasn't happy about it, but she had no choice because it's Doro. You know, he's still absolute even in this book. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't have a choice. Yeah, and he can the conditioning he did to his current girlfriend was just making her not get jealous yeah that's what i meant like it's like slight things here and there but she still yeah she kind of understood later on what her role was meant to be and she yeah. just went, went along with it yeah he kind of showed her to not get jealous and to not get angry that's two things yeah um also his relationship with mary at first is it mary yeah, Mary. Okay, I keep forgetting names. Mary at first was like not good, but then it started to slowly get better. Yeah. He Mary's was... a firecracker. 
Yeah, basically. I love it. She busts in there like, I gonna beat this white boy up. <laughs> <laughs> and Dora's like, you better not do that. He gonna, he yeah. gonna control your brain. Mm-hmm. And Dora's like, don't control her brain, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So, um, they formed that rapport and then I guess can go to transition. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. She, let's fast forward the transition. She goes through transition and then, oh no, I can't just say, and then like this transition was not like any other transition there ever was like, yeah. So Carl was basically helping her go through transition by acting as like a shield. Basically. Yeah. And then Dora was like, stop doing that. Or like do it, but like wait till she like can't yes. help herself anymore. Mm-hmm. But he had a hard time not doing it, and I think partially because of her abilities. Mm-hmm. I remember he keeps saying like I kept getting drawn in, even though I thought I was separated. Yeah, I think it was because of her abilities, but it wasn't fully realized yet at that point. Yeah, and then I guess coming towards the end of her transition, she reaches out or the pattern, as it's called now connects to what five other people yeah yeah who all have a role to play in this book later on but um initially that is what i like about this book it's written the way that i like to read so yes you could tell me who somebody is but then tell me in a different way so every time octavia brought in somebody else they already were doing something up until the time the transition happened they oh like what's this pull that's pulling me and that's everybody that was that was done to yeah my favorite was the guy who was basically mind controlling a whole entire community Jeez. and then he got his ass whoop yep because he got pulled right when the punches come in <laughs> yeah. that's crazy although to be fair he did <laughs> practically kill that guy afterwards man all right so we have clay a latent who pushes into transition pushed into transition sets brother has psychotic ability. So we have Seth and Clay. We have Rachel, who's a healer. And she was like an evangelist, right? Yeah. She basically would be a faith healer, but she would actually heal people. Yeah. And she heals almost like a Nyanwu does. But she could do it for other mm. people. Mm, not really. No? I, I think she heals like a little different. I don't, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I think she like pulls normal people's or anybody's mm-hmm. psychotic energy mm-hmm. and then uses it to heal people like that kind of way. Mm-hmm. In terms of Anyan Wu, I think obviously they must be related. Mm-hmm. But They're I think instead of, yeah, technically, yeah. I think instead of turning her powers inward, she turns it outward. That's what I meant. Like she could heal like Anyan Wu, but not oh, just yeah, herself. Did. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Jesse. I think that's who you're talking about. The other firecracker who was just his story was fun. Like he was the whole community knows if Jesse's around, whatever he wants, he gets. But like this guy that was not from the community was like, why? And then yeah, it turned into a fight, and then Jesse almost lost. Well, he yeah he almost well, he did. he lost wrong one. <laughs> yeah, he lose wrong one epically. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> and the guy probably thought. Oh man, this is easy. Why did he even hit this fight? <laughs> <laughs> he just second blow, boop, pop, boop. Damn. The whole community watching, like, wait, Jesse losing? Mm. What the heck is going on? And then we have Jan. I think I like Jan, Jan a lot. Jan had the saddest story, right? Yeah. Well, I don't remember all their stories. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. While I was listening to this story, I fell asleep and oh I missed gosh. a big chunk. Mm. Like after she brought them all into the house. Yeah. I might be fast forwarding. You are. I was listening to like them basically plotting to kill her and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I fell asleep. And then I woke up after they were all already like a family. Yeah. Okay, I guess we I'll <laughs> so I have break... to go back and listen to it again. I'll break it down a little bit from what I remember. Um What was Jan's story though? Jan had kids that she couldn't be around so she conditioned people to take care of her kids for her and one of, one of them passes away unfortunately and she's upset about it because doro told her to make sure she protects the kids and she did it I mean, she did well she it couldn't was an accident but 
not indoors, I guess. He let yeah, her down, basically. He don't give a F. No, nah, we talked about Jesse. <laughs> Rachel was the evangelist. And then Seth. Seth is the one who's uh, part of the pattern, but his brother is a latent. Yeah, clearly. And he, he couldn't be around anybody, so he was trying to give him like a, a place to stay in the community and probably find a woman that Seth would probably condition to love him. Yeah. Later on, Clay becomes uh, active, as they're called. And we're going to talk about yeah. that soon after we talk about their whole coming together and whatnot. So that's basically the I found, stories. I found Seth and Clay's story to be kind of heartwarming. Yeah, it was. Because, you know, I don't think most like, psych people stay with their siblings or stay with people in general. Yeah. But he was willing to stay with his brother and basically act as a shield sometimes. Yeah. And that word shield is reason. important because it comes a lot, a lot in the book. Yeah. It's basically, you can shield yourself from people and you can shield other people from outside. And that's how you help someone get through transitions. You shield them from some of the thoughts. But this was mentioned in the other podcast as well. I feel like transition has to go its complete way to get somebody to be what they need to be. It's like helping a butterfly get out of a chrysalis is probably going to die because it didn't take that time to actually come out on its own basically that's a good analogy yeah 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 and also i think dora told carl mm -hmm. about that like he was like basically the longer they stay in transition mm -hmm. because you keep shielding them they're going to take longer and the longer it takes the higher chance that they're going to die or go crazy yeah so everybody's pulled to Mary for whatever reason, well, the pattern, and they cannot. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about ignore that. Ignore it. Yeah. Let's talk about the mental image of how it looks. Cause I like that a lot. Like how she described it. It's like a web almost. And you could see the yeah. strands from person, well, from her to each person. Yeah. And she described it as like a kaleidoscope of colors, mm -hmm. but like in a strand as well. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, she's like a sun, like a small sun with these strands coming out. Yeah. And the, the strands could like stretch really thin or they could be like normal. And I, I really like that like mental image of it, like picturing yeah. it. You see what I mean? Like this book had, she had time to fix her mistakes in the first book. <laughs> well, technically this book came before the other book in terms Re of like her writing it. What happened, Octavia? Yeah, I don't know. She let herself go, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah she's connected to these people through the pattern that it's, it came to be called they cannot ignore the call so basically yeah. she's mind controlling them not not really but like a part of her is pulling, pulling a part of them and they cannot they can't block it out and they can't ignore it no matter what they do like they would try oh, certain should... things and like it would just they'll, they'll stop and do it yeah we should talk about the shielding Cause she completed her transition from putting up her own shield. Yeah. And Carl was trying to teach her how to put up a shield mm -hmm. in the times when like she was, I guess the comms yeah. like, in between her picking up all the stuff. Sometimes it would be moments of calm. Mm -hmm. And in those times he would try and teach her how to put a shield up. Yeah. But for some reason she just couldn't figure it out. And then until... eventually she gets the ultimate shield. Yeah. She got an ultimate shield. Her shield is the strongest in the whole story. Yeah. Because nobody could break in, basically. Unless she lets and them she in. she could break into theirs <laughs> without she, even trying. She's not even breaking. It's just like, it's not even there for her. Oh, yeah. It's like a it's like a little cord going through their shield that she has access to. So mm -hmm. nothing they could do. Yeah, that's why. Um, I like the fact that if you believe that she was lying, she would just be like, here's the truth. And it's like, no words needed. Yeah. It was like a... It could be like a one way or two way connection, right? If she wanted to be. Yep. I really this is, I agree with you. This is the best freaking book, dude. It Ooh. was so like descriptive and everything. Um, but I think at the end of her transition, she put up the shield. Reflectively, she shoots out her little tendrils, pull in the five strongest people around the, the state. Country. Was it all in the same state? The racial's from New York. Okay, the, all around the country then. Yes. Then, um, basically, she started to feel ownership of them. 
kind of. Yeah. And um, they didn't like that. So all of them resisted in their own way at first. And then basically it was described as them like attacking, but their attacks was affecting themselves more than, than anything else. Yeah. So eventually they just, it was like, like, like she threw a Pokeball mm -hmm. and they were like, and they're like, <laughs> you've caught whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. Oh, but before that, um, Dora was trying to tell her, trying to teach her actually as a father figure how to take care of people that belong to uh, you. Remember how to that? be a good slave owner. Yes, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I felt was, I feel like this book actually made me feel what you felt for Dora a little bit. I still didn't like him, but like, oh, look at him. He's trying, you know, help her out, help her get ready for this. And then later on in the book, we're going to find out. Blah 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 blah. But I like that he did that. He tried and tell her, "Hey, this could happen. They're not gonna like it. You need to do this, or you need to do this." And she was like, "Yeah, I'm Mary. I'ma do me." And she did. Like, yeah, she did not do anything. He told her pretty much. <laughs> she did not let me down. So I guess we could hey. say they all came together. They all met up. Mm -hmm. Is that when they had the big altercation? No, it wasn't. Yeah, not yet. Yeah, well, yeah. when they first came. Well, actually, we should talk about her own husband. He was upset with her. Just as they was about to start getting along. Mm -hmm. Then this happened. And now he's pissed with her because he's like, let me go. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I would if I could. Yeah. I don't know how. It's another power struggle. He lost his yep. power over her. Well, he not power over her, but he lost his power as a husband or like the male. Mm -hmm. And he didn't like that. And he lost potential power because maybe he could have had an opportunity to be like mind control ho or whatever mm. but no he has no chance at all yeah. yeah 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 which is another interesting thing if you're a person who could control minds mm -hmm. obviously you get bored with people who like obviously you can manipulate them do whatever you want yeah so you would think that you would get along more with people who you can't control right because they're always going to be unique you can't tell what they're going to do mm-hmm well, you which, still, you still question, need control, though. Which brings another question. God must be bored as hell if you know everything that's going to happen. Like, there's no, yeah. like, anything you, new. Yeah. And I guess maybe not because we have free will. So I guess we're the... Ooh, no the humans did that? Let me set a quick flood. Stir <laughs> things up. Nah, I think he knows the past, present, and future. So this free will doesn't matter in, in that case. That's what I was saying too, but my <laughs> wife and I had a big argument about that where she was like, no, free will still exists. And I was like, that's impossible. Yeah. But I just let it go because I was like, this is a waste of time. Well, maybe it's subjective because it does exist to us, but the outcome is already known. Yeah. Um, so Dora gave her some, some talking points. You know, don't tell them that I'm giving you authority. Just take authority. Mm hmm I think that's the only advice that he gave her that she needed, really. Because she kept trying to say it was Dora's fault. Yeah. For what happened. Well, it is. But <laughs> he yeah. didn't want that blame cast on him. Yeah. He Well, he was telling her, like, don't do that because then you're basically saying that you don't have no power and that they should reference to me and that you're just a side piece in this scenario when you're actually the one in charge. It's like if I'm a manager, if I'm the owner of a store mm -hmm. and I make you the manager... And instead of being a manager, you keep coming back to me to let me tell them what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, they're not going to respect you because you keep coming back to me. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. Um, I want to talk about something else before that, before we move on, though. Mm -hmm. um, Doro experiments. So, basically, she's what he was trying to create this whole time. Mm -hmm. I think the experiment is that he's trying to figure out a way to bring his people together. Yeah. People who are not in the same family, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, did they talk about the race of the people who she brought together? Were they all like black, uh, white? I don't remember them going into much detail about that. Jan Cho, her last name is Cho, so I figured she was Asian, of some Asian descent. And the others, uh, Jesse seems like he well, may You know, be Jesse white. have to be white. He yeah, has yeah. to be. Clay and Seth might be black. That sounds like black names. Yeah, they definitely black. They definitely. 
and then Rachel, I guess I don't know what she is. I think the the who's the faith healer? I think she black too. Rachel. I think she black. Um, because of how they described the church and when she was talking to the guy at the church mm -hmm. and stuff, that sounded very black. Yeah, like yeah, how yeah. they were interacting. Um. Yeah. So his experiment. He been doing this experiment for the so long, trying to get people together. But he kept failing because basically they would turn into what um, and Wiki was, yeah, where she, she would just kill people around them. Oh, they described that actually, didn't they? Yeah. About how he created somebody like Mary before, but she would latch onto somebody, bring them in. They they would kind of resist the urge to be near her. They would come in, and then basically they would just sap their life force. Over a long period of time, basically, mm -hmm. and then that person would die. Then they would latch onto another person, bring them in, and repeat the process yeah. forever. So one, it would kill Doro's food, and two, it wasn't exactly what he wanted. Yeah. Man. So in a way, she was successful. She was a successful experiment. But I don't want to spoil. But like. Eventually, it'll be too successful. Oh, in, yeah. Indoors, oh, yeah. We get in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We get in there. We're going to be here till four because I have to talk about this. So, <laughs> so, Doro, okay, not everybody's in the house. They all upset at her. Mm -hmm. How does she get them to, like, stop being upset with her? Because that's where I fell asleep. <laughs> you fell asleep in, like, the action part. Like, one of the biggest action parts there is. So yeah, um, they're all doing okay ish at this point, but she has to talk to them about the pattern and what she discovered about the pattern so far. So what did she discover? They they can't leave her. They have to be stuck here with her because as actives they can tolerate each other to an extent. They still want to leave, but in their case they can't leave because they're tied to her. So she's trying to tell them. Well, I'm in control now. Like, I'm basically going to be the stand-in Doro. I'm in control of the pattern. So you guys have to listen to me. You guys have to stay here within this community and find jobs and hobbies and things to do to occupy yourself because you can't just be in the house just bitching at me the whole time. Yeah. So they don't like that. And Jesse, obviously, being the firecracker that he is as well, stands up to her and he's like, okay, we can't leave her. She can't let us go. We have to take her down. So at this point, the different people that came together have relationships together. So he was in relationship with Rachel. So he wanted Rachel to help him get to her. But, um, wait. Yeah. Oh, they were trying to, like, organize a mutiny, basically. Basically, yeah, at that point. But I was trying to figure out if she... And Rachel spoke before that, and I think they did because oh, she could did. she could heal herself like Rachel could heal. Because she went in the, in the mirror, she cut herself, and she healed it back up. And Rachel saw that. Oh wait, wait, wait. that was an important scene because yeah, somebody was injured, right? Mm -hmm. And Rachel healed them. How did they get injured though? I, don't I don't remember. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Rachel healed them, mm -hmm. and then she was paying attention to what Rachel was doing through the pattern, mm -hmm. which was so cool because she could like. Anything anybody in the pattern is doing, she's aware of. Yes. She could read their thoughts. She could know what they're doing. She could mm -hmm. read their emotions mm -hmm. through the pattern without having to, like, break through their shield to do it. Yeah. And they don't know that she's doing it, basically. Yeah, they can't censor. So when Rachel was healing the person, she was basically observing what Rachel was doing. Yeah. So that she, And then she was like, hmm, I wonder if I could do that. Mm -hmm. And she went and tried. And then she... Yeah, and she cut herself so she could see if she could do it. Yeah. Which is dangerous because why she couldn't do it. Rachel's right there. <laughs> Rachel didn't like her though. Rachel had been like, she'll Dora, make it worse. Dora wouldn't let her let her die. True. So Jesse tries to start a mutiny. So he, Rachel, and I guess Jan. Because Jan didn't like her at all. Because Jan wanted Carl. So the three of them stand up Ooh. to her. Because Carl was like on her side, trying, you know, as Doro told him to be, and as he wanted to be, because he kind of loved her at that point. And then Seth didn't want no smoke because he was just chilling. He didn't want no drama. And yeah. Clay, like, 
Clay didn't want to drum on. Clay was like, "Set, don't, yeah, yeah. don't participate." Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, Jesse tried to attack him, attack her, and I guess through the pattern, she like put him down, basically. Yeah, she just basically sucked his life force a little bit. Yeah, without then, killing him. I think she did the same thing to Rachel because Rachel thought that he was dead because he was so unconscious. Yeah. yeah. She has to give her a little bit of uh, calm down juice. Yeah. Basically. Like, Here's the thought. He's not dead. Just calm down. Yeah. But he, yeah. he she also sucked some life from her too because she had to. Yeah. Yeah. And then in that, she felt what Doro feels when he kills. That euphoria, yeah. that euphoria from taking in somebody's force. Yeah. And I feel like that what Jesse did created what happens next throughout the book. Cause I, I feel like if she never felt that maybe she'll just been like, just chilling, you know, but now she has that taste. Yeah. She want out that yeah. taste some more. She described it as like having an appetite, but not necessarily needing to eat. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me about clay. So this whole time clay being ignored, right? But remember before when he was on the farm with Seth, because Seth bought a whole farm for him, away from everybody. Stole, but yeah. Stole, because he <laughs> could mind control. Yeah. Which is crazy. Everybody who could mind control, they just seem to all be thieves. They don't. They just making life easier for themselves, the best way they know how. So, Carl, I mean, what is his name again? Clay. Clay seemed to be living just fine amongst these people. Yeah. This whole time, like, we didn't hear nothing about him again. Until yeah. a little later, mm -hmm. I wonder if like he was already reaping the benefits from the moment he got there. Because even though he um always picking up all this static and stuff, and Seth would shield him, yeah. it didn't seem like Seth was having to work as hard as he had to before to help. Remember, everybody here is shielded because they try to protect their thoughts from each other. So I guess mm -hmm. he wasn't picking up anything from them. Not from them, but what about the neighborhood and? I think he was mostly in, in the house. I feel like his thing has to be do with proximity. I think most of them do that to proximity. Yeah, which kind of makes me think about what I wonder what the proximity is because his brother had to basically get him a farm in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. To be far enough away. But I think that's just a safety precaution, though. I think. Uh, yeah. Also, I think too, like it also depends not only on proximity, but what kind of thoughts are there. Yeah, because he was going to get him a caretaker. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that caretaker have to have not bad thoughts, or else it would still affect him anyway. But wouldn't Carl? Wouldn't that just make her not think like that at all? <laughs> he said he was going to make the person in love with him. Yeah, exactly. So she would have no negative thoughts. She just be like, "This is life." And what's messed up? You could control other telepaths as well, can't you? I think to an extent, yeah. Because he would go and program his own brother to mm. love the girl back. Yeah. That's crazy. But at that point, he's still a latent. He doesn't have any ability to shield himself or protect himself. Yeah. I wonder, like, if two psychics get into a fight and they both command control, yeah. is it just like whoever breaks the other person's shield wins? I believe so. Oh. That sounds fun. Not fun to actually do because I would not want to participate. <laughs> but... Sounds fun to watch. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't see it. <laughs> well, you wouldn't see it, but like if you could see it, yeah, mental, yeah, like, yeah. Sure, mental. It kind of look like um in Dragon Ball Z when like the enemy and a good guy sends a beam together and like they're doing this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So they're all in the house. She watched the girl heal. She healed herself. The uh, Aunt, what's the name? Of, the name of the woman again? Which one, Rachel? Rachel. Rachel realized something is up. Yeah. Like, hmm, how you heal yourself or what are you doing? Yeah. You could read our minds through the through the thing. And then she basically admitted it. She was like, Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she was supposed Dora, to. She wasn't supposed to tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then after that, that's when the fight began. Yeah. Because Rachel told everybody. During the uh, and, the argument, yeah. Yeah, and then they were like Nah, if you could see everything I'm doing, yeah, that's not fair, basically. Mm -hmm. And then she, at some point, she opened herself so they could read her mind, right? Well, that's like by showing them the truths of what she can do about the pattern and things like that. But just little bits. 
the only person yeah. she fully opened up to was Carl, which comes later. But I think after the fight, everybody just starts to like chill out. And then I think Clay happens next. Oh, how did Clay transition? Did she have to read his mind or something first? She kind of pushed him through, and I, I'm having trouble remembering how. If I remember, at least later on when she started recruiting everybody, she had to at least like read their mind or something first before she could find that little thread. Mm -hmm. Oh, so let's talk about that before yeah. we talk about Clay a little bit. Okay. So when she connected everybody in the pattern, it like, looks like a thread to them, right? But once she connects to a latent, it looks like a fake, like a faded thread. Mm. So like I imagine it as like a balls of like little energy, energy yeah. threads. Yeah. And then this one is like a like a energy thread that looks like is missing big chunks of it. That's how I kind of imagine it. And look kind of like dim. For me, it was like comparing twine to like yarn. So like wow. the thickness. Yeah. Yeah. So like. It's in a movie somewhere where we have like there's tiny threads connecting people together, but that's why I figured it out that like somebody who's a latent has like a a tiny twine going towards them, and she can yeah. just amplify it and then boom. Yeah, I wonder does she draw from the actives to then push it into the latent like that kind of way? You know what I mean? That could be possible. Dude, this book. Is amazing. <laughs> it's even like, better. It's even better with somebody else, right? Yeah, can you could theory craft about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, didn't he like drop away from the pattern after he transitioned? If I remember correctly, not really, because you can't. I thought he became like a, a he became in, in the yeah he was telekinetic, but he oh yeah because he's no longer in the pattern. Yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah, yeah. Will, I think only um. Telepaths could be in a pattern. Yes, yeah, true, true. So they didn't know what he was going to become, and then he became it, which happens to a lot of people. And then he just, he's free. I mean, he, was, he was always free. Was Emma in a pattern? On Yanu? Yeah. No. Oh, I could have swear she was in a pattern. She's a healer. She's not a telepath. Yeah, she... But her mom was in a pattern, though. The yeah. girl. Jirena. How did she get in the pattern? Try push her through. Oh, she became active. I don't remember. I think she went and talked to her about it. I think I I don't know. I didn't like her her so mom nice. that much. <laughs> yeah, neither me. But it'd be so nice if she was like, I'll just make you into active so you could stop having to deal with all the stuff yeah. you deal with. I think that's what happened. But I know for sure she couldn't help helping people after that. She had the yeah. same kind of thing that Dora was doing, but in the comparison. It was a lot better. Yeah. She needed to like feed, for yeah. lack of a better word. Yeah. But her feeding was symbiotic mm -hmm. rather than parasitic. But she didn't even know about what she was doing on a deeper level. He was like, Dora was like, you're doing the same thing that I'm doing. You're collecting everybody that you need to feed off of into one place. Mm -hmm. And then she realized that after a while. But I want... he, only, he only told her that to try and like make her stop doing it because he didn't want to do it anymore. But go ahead. I wonder how was her thing symbiotic though? Like I know she would passively feed off of everybody's energy, mm -hmm. even when she wasn't actively sucking it out to them. I think she was still like getting some like little yeah. trickles from everybody. Mm -hmm. But how was she helping them? Like, was she making it easier for them to stay around each other or something? I think that's what it was. I remember latents couldn't stay around each other and actives didn't like each other that much. Yeah. Yeah. So she made it easy for them to basically build a community because now, instead of repelling each other, they could actually be near each other without yeah. too much fuss. And I guess we can talk about... She had a recruitment thing going on where she would try and find latents all over the country, bring them together. Um, my controlled appearance. Ooh. Yes, go ahead. We missed stuff. We okay. missed stuff. What's up? Everybody had a role. Oh, right? yeah, that, that's during the, the whole thing. Oh, okay, okay. It's called seconding, when you'd bring a, a latent in to be active. And no one okay. liked doing it. 
Really? Why? I guess it was just a stressful time sort of thing to go through. To have to like take somebody through transition. Oh, and shield them and stuff. Yeah. Got it. But there were some actives that were not good either sometimes. Do you remember Hannibal? Uh, yeah. The one that was killing people, so they had to be... Shield. Yeah. What, take... what was his powers? I don't remember, but he was not a good person. He was doing... I think he was killing people. Yeah. yeah. So they would shoot basically kill those who didn't abide by the rules. She was yeah. basically just like Doro, but yeah. not as evil. Mm-hmm. So I guess Jesse was the hitman, basically, because that's what he was doing. And then Jan, who was like the black sheep, actually learned she had a different kind of ability. You remember that one? Oh, the telemetry or whatever it's called? Yep. Yeah, I like that power. That was a cool power. Yeah, I like that too, man. You could just touch a painting and you could go back to actually see who painted it and what they were feeling and things like that. And that's yeah. how they pass along their um their storytelling and their history through objects. Oh, we, we have to just explain a little bit more. Like, So telemetry is you touch an object and you could pick up any psionic energy from people who've been touching that object. So you could basically see the history of anything related to the object. Oh, wait, it was somebody in the group who, like, whenever she would walk into a house, she would have to be so careful because even though she was, like, transitioned, she wasn't fully in control or something. I think right? that was, I think that may be Jan. That's what we're talking about now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Jan, Jan benefited the most from the pattern because she got in way more control over her powers mm-hmm. after being in the pattern. She Before, she was scared to, like, go to certain places because if she mistakenly touched something she might witness somebody getting murdered and i think she would actually live it it's not just seeing it you actually experience it yourself Mm -hmm. so she used to have to be very wary about what she did and even touching other people if she touched somebody else she would pick up their whole history as well Mm -hmm. so she would be very careful and i think from the pattern she learned that she could not only pick up history she could also put down history onto an object yeah and i think that's where they realized oh we can use this to teach our kids the history of the pattern and we could teach them about doro and blah blah blah. so she, i guess what it did was i guess people gave her their thoughts and memories so she could put them into objects or something i don't know yeah basically and she could decide what thoughts and what memories would be coming from that object as well that's actually amazing. That's yeah. a cool power. Mm-hmm. Not as powerful as other people, but you can imagine, you could still use that in, like, imagine like an X-Men fight or something yeah. where you could like hit somebody with like a pebble or something and that pebble just full of like a bunch of murders. Yeah. So that person just feel like they keep dying over and over and over because of that pebble hitting them. Mm-hmm. It's like a genjutsu kind of vibe. Yeah. Um... So she's recruiting people, and at the point in the story, I think she has 1,500 adults and 500 children, so 2,000 people in this pattern. Well, no. S-H-E-E-E-E-E. Yeah. She has 1,500 1, 1, adults in the pattern and 500 kids who are latent going to be become in the pattern over time. And they have to figure out ways to deal with the kids because for some reason, adult psychics can't really deal yeah, with kids at all. So they have to basically take over the whole neighborhood, mm-hmm. turn all the muggles into slaves yeah. to take care of their kids. Yeah. What do they call the people who didn't have psychic powers? Mutes. Mutes. Yo. Emma did not like that word because it was basically calling them the N-word, as she said. Hey, yeah. Another theme of the book. Mm-hmm. Another theme of the book. And Emma didn't like the pattern either, didn't she? Like I don't remember, but I feel like she didn't like it. Um, she thought it was dangerous. I feel. Yeah. Something like that. Oh my gosh! Hold on, babe. Yo. Kaden, what's turn off my computer? Uh oh, podcast will be cut short. <laughs> There's a baby on the screen, guys. You just can't see him. There he is, a little bit. It's my little nephew. But um, I will say this while we're in intermission. 
If you guys are here, you've been listening this far, you are a trooper. You should like, subscribe, comment, you know, hit that noti bell because, I mean, why not? Why not subscribe? Don't make me be like these other YouTubers and yell into the mic. Subscribe. Like, that. like don't <laughs> let me do that because y'all know y'all need to go then. Mm-hmm. Um, you back, bro? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, so now they're recruiting people. Now Doro is like getting scared. Yeah. Cautious. And he's like, yeah, cautious. And he's like, the experiment going good, but going too good. Yeah. Let me see if I still have control. I think that's really what it was about. He's wanting to make sure that he still was in charge. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they taught the children of Doro. Everybody knows about Doro. So everybody knows who's really in charge. They just wanted to do things their own way. Which wasn't hurting anybody. Nobody was dying. But he came and he told her, hey, you have to stop this little program and go back to the old ways. Which was, like, just breeding. Yeah. Oh, he just wanted to just be his breeders again. Yeah. So he had all his cattle in one spot. And he was like, stop bringing in more cattle. I want y'all to bring in more people the old-fashioned way. Yeah. My way. Yeah. So I read in some notes that people are comparing Anyanu and Mary. They're saying that basically he's collecting people for Doro. Because he's bringing everybody to one place, making it easier for him to get them. I mean, that's what she was bred for, so that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you can't really be angry with somebody for what they were born to do, basically. They weren't angry, they were making the comparison. Oh, okay. And also, too, that's a nice thing to think about, right? People get upset at, like, children or, like, people in general for, like, being a certain way when that might just be their personality because of how they were born or let's use like sexuality for example yeah. how are you gonna be upset with somebody for being gay when they have literally no control over that it's the same thing here like she i mean i know you said that they're not upset but yeah. if they were it wouldn't make sense because she don't really have control like he literally spent three thousand years trying to create her yeah Hey. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Little cute self. Um. So door to her, stop it. She was like, "But why?" Basically. Yeah. And then, I think if Dora had left her alone, he actually would have stayed in power. Yeah. So he always he would just. He would just eat people as he needed. Mm-hmm. And she would have kept recruiting them because that's what she know. And she would have never explored the other option of killing him. Yeah. Which we could finally get to. So we here and all? We here and all? Yeah, we're finally yeah. here. Ah. Well, Doro tells her she has to stop bringing in people. She doesn't understand why. He doesn't tell her why. Like, there's no real reason why. So she talks to Carl. And Carl's like, well, you have to kill her. Kill him. Wait, sorry. Let's talk about um, the starting five or seven or whatever they were. They started calling themselves something, right? The um, founding family? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, the founding family. And then they would have households, basically, right? Yeah. What was the household about? Like, that would just be them with a bunch of latents or what? That's where... It would have actives taking care of latents and then I think taking care of kids as well in some regard because the kids had like to be in their own separate school off the side because there was too much of them together in one place. There were some psychics who could put up with them though, right? Yeah. That's interesting. And those are the ones who would go and let them know, hey, this is who you are, this is what you're going to be. And then my control the parents, let them go and whatnot. So basically, Emma had a problem with the kidnapping aspect of it. Wait, kidnapping? Well, they were taking the kids from their parents. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, somebody just joined the party. Uh-oh. That's me yeah. saying hello back. <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Wait, were their parents latent too or not? I think they were because latents could not take care of their children because they were so bad to them as her mom. Oh my gosh, another theme. Yeah. 
in the book, mm -hmm. you talk about black children growing up without well, they paint that picture, but it's not true. Mm -hmm. But let's just say children instead of black children. Children grow up without their fathers. Yeah. In this book, they take it to a whole other level of children grow up with none of their parents, basically. Yeah. And um, basically growing up with adopted parents, which by far is still better than America because as much as we are anti-abortion in America, well, I want to say we, yeah. as much as some people in America are anti-abortion, they do not give any way to have these people be taken care of once they're born. At least in this book, they all get adopted. Yeah. Granted, the people who adopt them are mind controlled into doing it. Yeah. Um, but I think that's another theme. Like, there's no sense of family in this book, really. Or at least no sense of blood, blood family. Your family is just whoever you're adopted into. Yeah. And that could be other psychics or mutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I feel so like the family aspect came from just the connection. That strong connection that you had, yeah. Yeah. You think people in pattern, like, grouped off as well? In some ways? Grouped off how? Like, for instance, if these these strings in the pattern have more of a connection with each other, so they kind of clump, and then these strings kind of clump, and then these strings kind of, like, that kind of... Oh, like the, the, the intertwine? Yeah. I'm going to say no. Yes or no. Because mm. we're going to talk about it in the, in the fight. Um, okay. Or we're going to just get into the fight, get back to the fight. Let's get back to the fight. So Carl tells her she got to kill Doro. And then he tells the, the other founding family members that it's going to happen. If you want to leave, you can leave. And they're like, we ain't leaving. Which I, is another, I guess, effect of the pattern. Like they feel so connected to her, they're not going to leave. Yeah. And they just want things to go about the way it's going about. Because even... It's a strong, way stronger loyalty than they felt for Doro, actually. Yeah. yeah. So I guess Doro tells her to stop. And then like, she knows she can't stop. And then she wants to get everybody away from the from the place as far as possible. Because yeah. if she happens to die, the pattern breaks and then they can't stand each other again. So it's going to be mayhem. Yeah. So the plan was to send Carl's lover, who was also Doro's lover, to Doro's room to distract him so he wouldn't feel people leaving. That did not go well at all because... It's Doro. Backfire. He's Backfire like, big time. What are you doing here? You know, you, you, yeah. love, with, you love with Carl. So right. he comes to the room once she's trying to tell everybody through her mind, run away. And then he comes to the room and she's like, hey, y'all stop running away. I'm going to need you guys to sit down, stand still because I'm going to need your help. So yeah, the fight starts. And I, I want you to describe the fight. Do you like that image of what they were? Yeah. So I like that she told everybody to like sit down or like lay down or whatever because she knew that she would have to suck their energy. And she didn't want them to like hurt themselves if they like she drained too much. So I really like that about her. I think honestly, Mary, despite being a firecracker, she was a very caring person. Like even for her mom, like I remember earlier on in the book, she was talking about how before she's like get her mom gifts. When she was still pretending that she was her mom, kind of like. Mm -hmm. All right, so the fight. So this is my favorite fight in the, in the whole thing, man. Uh, we didn't talk about when Doro shared his experience with Anyan Wu. Yeah, and he has, and the important part as well. Okay, sorry, no fight. So Doro had a recollection of how he came to be. Oh, yeah. How could we miss that? I feel like that's why yeah. you understood it more than I did because you read this book first and you had this to, to yeah. guide you. So basically, he was a child who was going through transition, but back then, there was no name for it. And during his transition, he almost died and he took his mom and his dad and he just kept taking people and taking people and taking people. No, let me tell the story. Let me tell the story. No, no. <laughs> you, 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 you've given it a general thing. I want to be very specific. Oh, boy. Go Doro ahead. was a very... His mom, all her children died. He was the only one that survived. Mm -hmm. Like, they would die on birth. They were all weak as fuck. Doro was also weak as fuck, but he survived. 
Yeah. He nearly died several times in his childhood from sickness and stuff, but he survived. Then he was going through transition. And when he was going through transition, he was picking up all the mental static and all the stuff that everybody picks up. And I think in his last phase, it's kind of similar to Mary, where he reflexively did something. And in this case, his mom came in to check on him because he was there going through his stuff, looking like a crazy, like, you know, um, schizophrenic, I guess. Yeah. So mom came in to check on him and without realizing what he did, he transitioned his body. He, he basically consumed his mom and became her. Yeah. So now while he looking down at himself, yeah. he's confused. His mm. transition is over. He not pick up any more mental static. And he's just confused about what's going on. He's looking down at his own body. Yeah. I think his dad comes in the room to check on the wife to see what's going on. And again, he transitions. He, he, I want, I, not using the correct word, but he basically takes his dad's body next mm -hmm. on reflex. After that, I think he realized what's happening and he gets scared and he just start like, instantly transferring his mind to a bunch of people all over the place yep. uncontrollably and basically being scared like he don't know what's going on he just transferring 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 and then eventually i think he ends up in a little boy's mind or a little kid's mind and apparently he transitioned so much for so many i don't know years i don't even know how long it took before he finally stopped but there was a war going on between egypt and his country and Egypt started enslaving everybody there, and he was in a boy's brain by the time he got enslaved. One of his cousins. So by then, <laughs> oh, one of his cousins, yeah. Look at the cutie. Hi. <laughs> oh, man, I would need a baby. Anyway, um, got enslaved. I guess he finally got control of his body by then, so he stopped... Because he could have stopped that war easily if he wanted to. Um, and then he said at that point, he was like basically blackout. He didn't know what the heck happened for like all that time. I think that was just a way for her to not have to write it all out. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but he basically said he blacked out and then he like regained like sanity, I guess. At some point, like 500 years later, I think he said. Imagine being blacked out for 500 years. That's crazy. Very crazy. But yeah, he finally regained consciousness. And then from there, he felt a draw to somebody. And that's the first time he killed somebody on purpose because they tasted good. And then after that, he basically became a predator, hunting down these people who had this particular taste that he wanted to taste. And then after a while, he was like, why am I doing this? Let me just breed them like cattle. Then I don't have to hunt them down. And then that evolved in, instead of just breed them like cattle so I don't have to hunt them down, let me just make them into my people. Yep. So I guess you could describe so. the fight now. Okay, let's talk about him sharing the experience with Anyanmu first, though. With Mary? With Mary? No, Anyanmu first. Okay, go ahead. I remember he shared the experience with her because he was like, I've only shared this with very few people because they don't usually like it. Oh, okay. But Anyan Wu like participated and that's why he like kind of fell in love with her even more. Gotcha. Okay. So basically the show the mental images in the mental landscape, he's like a sun, like a bright shining star. And their consciousness is like a smaller version of that. And what he basically does is he wraps himself around them and then they become one for a little while. And if he don't stop, eventually their consciousness starts to like get destroyed and become a part of him. And that's how he like takes over our body. Gotcha, gotcha. So Anyan Wu, when she first started like doing, when he first came to her, I wanted to do it. She was participating, like she allowed herself to like enjoy it. Cause he says like, basically it feels pleasurable at first to the person he's taking over. It feels pleasurable until they realize that they're dying and then they start to feel fair. Yeah, yeah. And then it's not pleasurable for him anymore because he feels whatever they feel, basically. Mm -hmm. But with Anyan Wu, she didn't feel fair. She felt like the pleasurable part of it. Yeah. She even realized that she was dying, but she didn't care. Yeah, I remember that now, yeah. 
Yeah, she didn't care because she was like, well, whatever. He tricked me, basically. We missed something very important as well. What? When Mary first transitioned, what did she try to do? I don't remember. She tried to read Doro. Oh, yes! That's an important part, too. And then she so got this, somebody... this falling sensation, like she about to not be around anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't describe that. That's funny. That's a good... So, yeah, once he was messing with Anyanwu, and Anyanwu was like, I'm dying. He tricked me. But she didn't feel fair because she was like, whatever. This yeah. is Doro. He's going to do whatever he want anyway. Mm -hmm. So then he started to untangle himself from her and break apart from yeah. her so that yeah. she could live. And he loved her so much for that because he can't share his experience with anybody unless he's about to kill them. Yeah. And the few people that he could share it with who could survive, which people who are strong psychic people, it always felt like they was doing it, but not willingly, like not consensually. Yeah. So for him, it felt kind of rapey. So he didn't often do it because he didn't like that rapey feeling yeah, of yeah. doing it. But he really appreciated Anyanwu because she actually participated. She actually enjoyed the pleasure and allowed him to feel it. And she felt his pleasure back, and like it was like a whole thing. Yeah. Oh, speaking of that, we missed something else. When oh, Carl, man. when Carl and Mary made love in a special way. I fell asleep for that part. Oh I my gosh! Right. But I, I, do, I do remember it from like you know yeah. I've read this book so many times. Like, kind of, I do remember it, but I wouldn't remember that unless you brought it up just now. Yeah. So let's talk about Mary realizing that she cannot mind read Doro. Mm -mm. So she described the experience of approaching the ledge of a cliff. Mm -hmm. You could force yourself to step over it, but you know you're going to die. And that's how she described it. Oh, she also described like when she swept out her consciousness to, to uh, find out everybody in her vicinity, mm -hmm. she could see them. She could like feel their mental energies and all that kind of stuff. Yep. But for Doro, he felt like a lamp. He didn't feel like a living thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was an interesting thing. Okay. Now you could describe this the uh the intimate encounter. Mm. So normally <laughs> um psych what was it psychopaths? Telepaths are shielded to each other and the people. So when Carl was making love with let's say Vivian, it would be like a one way gate where he could see into her mind. She can't see into his mind. But Unfortunately, Carl and Jan actually did get together once, well, multiple times, but they had a special way of just completely unshielding each other, unshielding themselves, and like just going into each other mentally, which would heighten Ooh. the experience because I could feel what you're feeling, but then I'm not just seeing it, I'm actually feeling what you're feeling, what I'm feeling, what I'm feeling. So it's like, like a double. It's like a loop. Yeah, exactly. And that, that was just like, Reading, I was like, "Ooh, that sounds nice." But that then, sounds hot. <laughs> yeah, but since you couldn't lie to um Mary, once she did it with Carl, she saw that he, he did it with um Jan, but it it wasn't the same thing as with Mary because with Mary she completely unshielded, but Jan was still hesitant because she didn't really like people like that. So what she yeah. and Carl did that that brought the relationship to a whole other level. Yeah, man, I would love to do that in real life. Yeah, man. Like, can you imagine that? Like. I can, you know? and it's, it's scary, and it's, like, fun at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Because as a telepath, right, if you allow somebody in, they could yeah. hurt you. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, full trust. Mm -hmm. that's and why that's, that's why Mary loved Carl so much, because mm -hmm. there were so many times she just opened herself completely, and he only did what he said he was going to do. He went for that specific thought, and he was out. Yeah. Man, Carl, as much as he hated her in the beginning, yeah. he actually, like, was a good husband for her. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that sounds so hot, man. Because yeah. you know, like you, we have this idea of like loving somebody emotionally, mentally, physically, and all that. But they could actually do it. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I feel like that's all a right, so... uh, sorry, like as a a connection to what we feel with people when we have our walls up and we finally let them in. It's like something. Ooh! Like... Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 dude this i love how these these stories have so many parallels man all right now the fight okay finally 
<laughs> so Doro comes in the room. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't have to say she's nothing. Like, she's like, you know what I'm doing. He's like, all right, let's lay down this bed together and just see what happens. So now they basically in the mental landscape now. You forget about Carl. Carl got in between them. Oh, what happened? I, I think I woke up. Carl Carl right tried now. to step in between them to like stop them or talk them down and they were like, You have to leave. My boy was like, I want to sit down right here. He just sat down in the room. <laughs> yeah. And then they went yeah, to yeah. the side of the bed and they're like, Carl, you need to at least walk away. So he went to the to the um chair by the window to watch them. Okay. Yeah, I wonder what I wish. I wish that she. I mean, it probably would have been boring, but mm. describe what Carl was seeing a little bit. Uh, just, just this. Just... Yeah, just both of them just there like this for like an hour. <laughs> like, they just Carl's like, "This is some boring shit." <laughs> I go and read a book. Let me give me a glass of milk and come back. <laughs> <laughs> But he couldn't walk at that. He can't do anything at that time, actually. Yeah, he couldn't do anything because she was sucking energy from him. I yeah. think he was the first person she sucked from, right? Yeah, he went limp. Yeah. Luckily, he didn't die. Yeah, man. Because some people did die. Um, so, the fight starts. You see two suns, two big, bright stars. Mm-hmm. One larger than the other. Mm-hmm. I think Dora was bigger than her at first. Yeah. So, at first, she tried attacking him normally how psychics fight. Yeah. Right. Yep. And he basically just immediately just enveloped her. Like it's just a big sun yeah. overtaking a small sun. Mm-hmm. And at first she starts to struggle. And the way how Dora describe it is the more you struggle, the faster he kills you, basically. Yeah. Because he likes to suck up that energy. And for her, he was relishing in it because he was sucking up her fear mm-hmm. and, and like liking it because yeah. obviously he was basically punishing her by killing her. Mm-hmm. So he was reveling in it. And at first, she was like really fighting. Actually, before the fight even began, she sucked a bunch of people's energy. I think that's why Carl survived. Yeah. Because she sucked up a bunch of people's energy at first yeah. to go into the fight. Mm-hmm. And then when she was in the fight, Doro start absorbing her, and then he described it as the best meal he ever had because it was so much energy all at once. Because yeah. normally, you know, he killed one person at a time. He just get their little mm-hmm. psychic energy. But with how he was getting all of their psychic energy as well. Yeah. So he was really enjoying the meal. Yeah. And then she pretty much died. But five, five she couldn't die. Five times. Yes, yeah, she, she died five times, but she couldn't die because every time she would die, the pattern would just automatically suck people's energy and keep her alive. Yep. So basically, the only way to kill her would be to kill literally everybody in the pattern mm-hmm. all at once, which Doro probably could have done if he didn't lose the fight. Yeah, he said he could kill him multiple people at the same time. But the other thing is, I don't think he wanted to do that either because... Mm-hmm. He would lose a lot of his work that he did over these 3,000 years. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Yeah, I you, guess. You know why I like this fight so much? When I text you that I was pissed is because the fight has started and she was losing. I was like, they're going to do this. Yep. They're going to do this. Yep. <laughs> then, then I read the other part. I was like, never mind. No, no, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. He he was... like, I pissed. <laughs> He's like, never mind. He was like, you know what? I'm going to end this fight. I'm gonna pause this fight, leave, do what I gotta do, and then come back and finish the fight. I was like, wow, you talking some big talk. Yeah. And then it switched. Because he couldn't he couldn't kill her. Yeah, exactly. He was like, let me go regain my energy and come back. Or let and me actually out another kill, tactic. kill her physically. Yeah, that's what he was gonna do. He was gonna find that body, yeah. come up to her and kill her. Mm-hmm. Because she can't really stop him from doing that. Yeah. Really and truly. Mm-hmm. Um, she can't kill him, obviously. But at that point she didn't know how. Yeah. And he knew he could kill her, even though I think it would have been hard for him to kill her because she could just heal herself. That's why he'd have to cut her head off completely. Just shoot. Um, she might not have been as good as Emma in terms of healing, but she was learning very quickly how to yeah. like do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and also, did she ever mind read Emma? 
Remember, Dora went to Emma first and told her that um, Mary's getting too dangerous, and this and that, and the third. And she read that conversation to understand what was going to happen next. Okay. But I meant more so, like, did she ever mind read Emma to, like, learn how to heal and stuff? Oh, no. I don't think so. It didn't describe that. If she did, she would have gained so much knowledge because Emma had over 400 years of knowledge of how to heal. Yeah. But probably more so, than that. Anyway, probably more than that. Plus all the plants and stuff that she ate, all the poisons that she consumed to figure out how to counteract. So there's a thunderstorm uh, outside, so this is gonna be cutting short. Okay, I gotta hurry up. That's yeah. why I'm hearing. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> Doro overtaking her, she nearly died. He decided, I can't kill her fast enough. Let me go re strategize, take over some bodies, come back and kill her. But then she noticed something. Mm -hmm. Is this when she noticed the little strand? Yeah. She noticed a little strand leading to Doro. Mm -hmm. She's like, this look a lot like a latent strand. Yeah. Hmm. Let me tug at this, see what happens. Yeah. And then she realized Doro is a latent. Mm -hmm. This whole time he was a latent. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah. I wonder what would have happened if she had um make him into an active. Like, would he have died because he didn't have his own body? Mm. Do you think they actually need bodies, honestly? I think so. So I think they have a... I, I, the way I interpret it is that they have a genetic mutation that allows their body to do this stuff. So then it still brings the question up of what Dora actually is. Is he a mutation himself? I think so. Mm. But like different. I wonder if he had survived his transition in his own body, what he would have been. Yeah. Like, he probably would have been like her, maybe. Yeah. Or, like, he probably would have been like his field experiments. Mm. Like, he would have drawn him in, kill him. Yeah, Next yeah, one, yeah. draw him in, kill him. Um, so, she found his thread. She started eating him. Yes. And then they had a power struggle. Ooh. Both of them trying to eat each other. Ooh. Yeah. Both of them just, mm, I'm going to suck you off. I'm going to suck you off. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> But in the end, because he was a part of her pattern now, she started sucking him off through her pattern and normally, like basically eating him and draining him through the pattern. Yeah. So he couldn't fight from both ends, basically. And then he started to feel scared. Yep. Okay, at first, when she started to eat him, he was like, I'm not going to let you win. I, like, I know how to fight against myself. Yeah. I just don't have to, I just don't struggle. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't draining much of his energy at first. Yeah. Because he just wasn't struggling. Mm -hmm. He just was calm. He like, okay, I'll let you get your little punches in. Yeah. And then after he started eating her again, and then it would go back and forth until she found that he was in the pattern. Yeah. Then after that, Doro started feeling scared. Yeah. And then she started relishing in his fear. Mm hmm. And that was GG's. GG's, Doro. The way how it ended was the writing described it as his screams of terror, his his silent screams of terror. I was like, damn, that sounds epic and scary. Yeah, dude. Down with Doro. So now Doro's gone. 3,000 years down the drain. <laughs> his own fault? Yeah. I think if he had left her alone, he could have definitely still been in charge, especially since they were teaching everybody about him. But you couldn't defy him anyways. Yeah. So, like, what are you worried about? And I think the thing is, he underestimated her. Yeah, he did. And I think Emma warned him about that in the beginning, didn't she? Mm-hmm. And I think this also brings another theme. Basically, men not feeling threatened by women yeah but in the end everybody had the chance of yeah. being lucky at least mm -hmm. at, at least once yep yeah so yeah so that was a good ending for the book i think we were you were happy that doro died definitely what made you feel a connection to him in that in the end though what connection well like you felt like more like um what's the word i'm looking for like you kind of like saw him more as a person well when he was given uh mary instruction 
when he was crying for Anyanu, and I guess the jealousy and the need for power. Yeah. I also saw some humanity in him when Isaac died. Oh yeah, then too, then too. Yeah. But yeah, he's a very interesting guy. He didn't see himself as a human being, did he? I don't think he did. He, he really wasn't. Because she was like, what race are you when she was a kid or something like that? I did many like, races. Yeah, he's like, I'm not a race. <laughs> and she's like, well, what were you born as? He was like, I was born black. Yeah. And she's like, well, then you're black. Yeah. And he's like, no. That's, that's strong, I'm... too. That's some strong words. Too. Yeah, that's strong. He was like, nah, I've been black, I've been white, I've been Asian, I've been Native American. Yeah. He's been a man, he's been a woman. Mm -hmm. I also thought about that, having sex as a different sex. Mm -hmm. And what was that like for him, especially since, you know, he was born a guy? I, I think they described it as both of them enjoying it. Well, obviously. <laughs> but I meant more like, <laughs> I meant more like, did he like understand women better after? Like, you know what I mean? Mm, no. Like at least their sexuality better. Maybe. Maybe that part. <laughs> but then again, he didn't have to me that kind of introspection to actually do something like that. Yeah, actually, he didn't really care. If it was like Anyanu now, she'd understand like the different parts, like what's happening with the hormones and things like that. But he didn't have that kind of understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he was a good lover, though, in bed? Definitely. Obviously. Well, he had 300 years of experience. He better be. Or else he thousands of thousands of thousands of children. Yeah. And, and everybody wants him. Yeah. Let's talk about Anyanu's ability to shapeshift and how it feels when you touch it while she's doing it. Because he kind of described that at one point, too. You go ahead. He said it felt like her skin was like clay, but like it felt good. Yeah, yeah. And then she was like, You felt this before. And she meant like she's done it during sex. Oh wow. Yeah. You remember that? She was talking about how like she he's felt it before, but he just didn't know. Ah. So she was like rejuvenating. Oh no, that's wild. She's just shape shifting up that, that pom pom boy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Hey. If you have any kids in this podcast, please. We already told them not to Parental guidance. Here. This is PG-19. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah. These are some good books. I really appreciate you asking me to read them with you. And I like to... Hey. It's created a, a, like a bond for us almost even more than we had before, I believe. Yeah. I appreciate you reading them with me because, you know, I be trying to get everybody to read these books with me. Especially Mind of My Mind. Mind of My Mind is my favorite one. Obviously, it's the very first one I read. And I feel like when you told me, like, I really like this book. Yeah. Like, I told you, like, that made my day because yeah. it's nice to hear somebody appreciate something that you, like, really love. Mm -hmm. So, that's for reading with me. I, I kind of want to, like, shout out the other podcast that gave me, like, some insight into what I was thinking, how I was feeling. Because they, they were very objective in their thoughts they were just you know they wanted a stronger black female as the lead role which i yes that's me i, I kind of want to watch it i can't find it in my history though um, let's uh look for it later and put it in the show notes i mean not show notes i found it description yeah oh, you did. but i just want to shout them out verbally to oh, oh put it in the chat black Booktician. that's her name yeah, the locked booktician, sorry. And um oh. go ahead. one more shout out to the Soul Affirmations podcast. I was listening to the podcast that's when I share with you. And y'all voices just sound so melodic and so beautiful. Like I, the part of me that does production, I'm like, I need to find out a way to get our mics to sound like that because they were sounding like they were inside my ears or inside of me. I mean, you know pause but it was a good experience <laughs> go ahead i also wanted to say we have two more books in the series to read we're gonna read the next two books well audio books and then we're talking about those together the same way we did with this mm -hmm. because all the stories are obviously interrelated 
but I felt like the first and the second book are more closely related, and then the third and fourth are more closely related. Gotcha. So, yeah. All right, man. This has been a good, good day. We went over time, but who cares? I think the audio listeners might enjoy this one a lot because this was a very yeah audio focus. I feel like I'll break it down into two episodes, if that's okay. One for the first yeah. book, one for the second book. Yeah, yeah. So if you're hearing I this now, anything... and you listen to the second one, go listen to the first one, please, because they're connected. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit yeah. the bell. You know what's the you know what's the benefit of hitting the bell? Also, have benefit. Tell them. Okay, I'll tell you. Yeah. You get one month oh, free, no. Oh, no. free, uh huh, free guys. You can't knock free mm-hmm. notifications about us coming on. And after that first what what happens? <laughs> oh, then you get a lifetime supply of that. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. This has been Rabbit Hole Roundtable Talks, and we'll see you guys hopefully in the next two weeks. All right, guys, take care. Peace. Thank you.